Hello friends. In continuation to uh, our talk on female urethral microanatomy, in my former video, I explained to you just the fundamental basic design, how it is made vertically and how it made circumferentially. In this video, I will talk to you more in detail about the mechanics of the intramural urethra, the first 20% of female urethra and that's also you may call as bladder neck. You will re recall this diagram which I showed you in my first presentation and I'm talking to you in this video only about this part, the intramural urethra, rest I will talk later. The first concept that you need to understand here is that if this is the bladder, area of bladder neck and the intermural urethra, that's how it's going downwards and the detrusor muscle fibers, they come down from bladder, come behind the bladder neck and they go around the urethra and come back to ascend on the back of the bladder and they traverse around the intramural urethra like this. I'm making a circle for about three fourths of the circumference of the urethra. And this is crucial to understand. It is not like this. The looping of detrusor fiber is not in the half of it. It is not like this. That's coaching only on the half of it. It is like this. If I show you like this, you will understand this is the correct design. This is not the way it is. This is the way it is. Right? Now this understanding that the outer longitudinal muscles from detrusor, they descend down and they course around the intramural urethra. This was studied in detail by Dr. Tanago. And this is a very old knowledge and it has been substantiated by many, many microanatomical dissection on female cadavers. If you see this is the bladder and that's the proximal urethra. And now we'll be showing you how the detrusor muscle fibers, outer longitudinal fibers, this is how fiber descends and courses around the urethra and goes back on the bladder. One bundle of fiber. Second bundle of fiber descends and then courses around the bladder neck and goes in another direction. We are showing you this with different color so that you understand that there are many such different different bundles which are descending from bladder and encircling around the proximal intermural urethra like that. Another bundle and another bundle. If you concentrate here and make a cross section in the proximal urethra, then you will see it something like this. This is the urethra. One group of fiber is coursing like this. It's like a racket handle. Fiber, I told you, they loop the three-fourth of the urethral circumference. This is in one direction. Then the other group of fibers is in the opposite direction. Another group of fibers is in third direction and another group of fibers in the other direction. So what is happening is that the proximal urethra has oppositely directed loops all around this and these loops are made by detrusor fibers. What it does, imagine these loops are all away and open and loose. So this urethra remains open. The moment you tighten these loops the urethra gets occluded. I hope I made my point clear. You will see again. Here these loops concentrate on one loop for a while. This loop is loose. This loop is also loose. This loop is also loose. And the, the, this loop is also loose. Each loop is loose. So urethra is open. The moment the loop is pulled in all directions, the urethra gets occluded. You understand this like this. In a filling phase of the bladder, the base plate of the bladder is flat. 
and this is one loop and this red one is another loop as bladder fills more it stretches out laterally so this detrusor loops are also stretched out laterally and urethra gets occluded here like see this is it's concentrated here this is open and this is closed this is open and this is closed this is open and this is closed this is because of lateral stretch on these detrusor loops occluding the urethra and i have shown you only two direction and this has happened anteriorly posteriorly also right so as bladder fills more and more there is a more and more stretch and this is the main mechanism of bladder neck occlusion at rest when the patient voids the bladder base becomes like a funnel right and i'll tell you more later why this becomes like a funnel when it becomes like a funnel these loops become oblique and as this dome contracts the loops become loose see here that's how the loops become loose these loops are normal and they are loose normal and loose now as the loops slide down because of the obliquity the outlet opens and patient is able to void you may have noted that in filling cystogram at rest the anterior wall of bladder is like this and the posterior wall of bladder is flat in a voiding mcu the anterior wall as well as the posterior wall gets funneled this chain happens in the anatomy of the base of the bladder and this is what is responsible for disentanglement of the detrusor loops this is how it is the funnel right bladder outlet so friends if i say that the bladder neck is structurally and functionally different from rest of the bladder and the urethra also to some extent because it has the active component of the muscle loops which constrict and deconstrict the urethra depending upon the need and it also has a passive component which allows this bladder neck to control the urine in filling phase and convey the urine in the voiding phase so bladder neck is very intricate structure and uh, during the construction of a female it has to be conserved so i hope you understood this basic mechanics with the help of these animations but still if you have any question you can write to me on my email so much so about the microanatomy of intramural urethra and its mechanics in the next video we will move down and we'll talk about the middle part of the female urethra so thank you very much